is how it used to be. Take off tape from me and get ready for the big parade. It's the place to be here and not behind the hollow lane. The kids are jumping around, everybody throw a look to look. But just a thing in the red line, let's be freaking out. I remember you from Maxis. You do? Absolutely, oh, I do. Uh, I remember you from Maxis and... Uh, uh, and a real hellion, the, right? I know, and, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, you, you were something else. Um, uh, what is it like to be an artist? Well, in those days, like in the 60s, I was arrogant as hell. And uh, that's why... Uh, 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 you get that uh, you you were something else, but uh, but I was I was uh, I was a uh, I thought I was hot stuff. Uh -huh. Actually, I still do, but I'm sort of te tempered, toned down a lot. Uh -huh. Some call John Chamberlain the Ernest Hemingway of the art world, a man whose life and work are indelibly intertwined with the culture of the American male. Chamberlain came to New York in the late 1950s to an art community still laced with the mythic times of the Cedar Bar, the legendary watering hole of Franz Klein, Jackson Pollock, Willem de Kooning, and the like. This was a community highly compatible with Chamberlain's bravado and his passionate, hard-drinking, hard-working, macho style. He quickly gained the admiration and affection of his fellow artists, as well as young dealers such as Dick Bellamy, Alan Stone, Ivan Karp, and the like all of whom identified with his irreverence and lust for life. His early youthful energy was directed towards making sculpture, and in the years that followed, he's created a body of work that has made him one of the foremost American sculptors. Fashioned and wrestled from car parts found in automobile graveyards, his sculpture has an undeniably distinctive American style, suggesting speed, power, destruction, and recreation. Today, his work is found in the collections of major museums around the world. Now in his 70s, he works and lives with his family at the tip of Long Island. On a sunny spring day on Shelter Island, Art New York talks with John Chamberlain about his life and his work. Do you think art should be provocative? Oh, constantly. I think that's what it is. And I'm uh. sure that it's going to be provocative to someone and I don't, and, and uh, 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 I think everyone likes that provocations. I, uh, I mean, there's enough stuff where people are told what to do or how to think or what to feel. There's enough of that that there should be, there should be one place where your act of discovery is still alive. And I think that place is art. 